In this video, I will show how to convert a warehouse glass texture to 3D glass and making the glass shine a bit by adding fake reflections. These fake reflections are made the same way as the chrome parts you see on vehicles. They don't require UV mapping, but instead, the visuals depend on how the vertex normals are oriented. If you're on version 2021 or above, for GTA materials to work, set to max legacy and restart 3DS Max. Start by importing the warehouse model. Because I am adding glass to this model, it would make sense to add some walls on the inside of the warehouse. There are a number of ways of doing this, but I will do it from scratch to keep it as low poly as possible. I am adding shell because the window frames will have a thickness of 20 cm. For the glass, you could make the window portion of the texture transparent, but that will introduce transparency artifacts in-game like explained in Guide ID 82, which explains the basics of glass. I will instead remove the window details from the texture, move the window details into its own texture, and then create a DFF just for the windows. The two reasons we are creating the glasses boxes is, first, 
to easily configure the vertex normals for better reflection quality, and second, to easily use as Boolean subtract operators. This glass 3D model will then be placed several times in game using the XYZ coordinates that we will export from 3 Siskins Max later. I will be using splines to easily distribute the glass across the sides of the building. I will offset the splines a tiny bit for when working with booleans later. It can help to remove triangulation from the mesh because otherwise it can affect our Boolean operations and the quality of our glass reflection effect.
Because environment mapping relies on vertex normals, we need to make some changes to those. If you are unhappy with the result in-game, then you would just need to change the vertex normals orientation or reduce or increase envmap opacity. The prelight and envmap values used in this guide are only a guideline. The glass will look different depending on which weather is active in-game. This is optional, but we can improve the UV mapping and pre-light of the window frames a bit. We can now export the files to the game. I won't need custom collisions for the building, but you are welcome to create some if needed. Export the building DFF. Export the glass DFF. Before exporting the glass DFF, it is important to note that there is a limitation with environment mapping. If you export vertex prelights for daylighting and extra vertex colors for night lighting, 
then the material's environment mapping opacity parameter has no effect. If you do not export extra vertex colors, meaning the lighting will look the same during day and night, then the material's environment mapping opacity parameter will apply. I had set 0.3 opacity earlier in this video, because 100% opacity looks too strong for my liking. I will therefore export without extra vertex colors. Export the glass collision. Although I am adding a glass collision surface, which will create a glass shatter sound effect when shot at, it won't have any effect in-game because I am not exporting collisions for the building's window holes. Export the object placement coordinates. We need to move the building and the windows to its location in the game. I have already decompiled all binary IPL files from GTA3.img, and so I can quickly get the original coordinates for any object. However, you can also grab the coordinates with various map editors for GTA or MTA, as long as they display the full decimal length in the coordinates. At last, create your glass object TXD. I will just create a copy of the building TXD, remove all contents, and then add the textures. In order for glass transparencies to render in-game, you will need to set alpha transparency flag in engine replace model.